Welcome to a conversation with a community leader sponsored by Leadership Kitsap. I'm Kerry Bozeman, your host, and I'm the former mayor of Bellevue, Washington and Bremerton, Washington. And I'm currently a port commissioner for the Port of Bremerton. And my guest today is Joe Morrison, who is the exec, I'm gonna make sure I get this right, Joe, executive director of the Kitsap Economic Development Alliance, which is commonly known as KEDA, correct? That's correct. We say KEDA because Kitsap Economic Development Alliance is a little bit of word salad. So yeah. we make it easier by saying yeah, KEDA. Exactly. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Before we talk about KEDA and all the work KEDA does re relative to economic development and jobs and all that kind of thing, what's your background? Where are you from? What brought you to Kitsap County? Yeah, uh, great question. So I'm an Alaska kid. I was- Whereabouts in Alaska? Anchorage. Huh? Yeah. How big's Anchorage? It's about the size of Kitsap. It's- ah. Probably 290,000 people yeah. now. What's the main industry in Anchorage? Well, the industry that drove everything was uh, resource extraction, right? Oil yeah. and gas, yeah. typically. Uh, that's still a, a very strong part of the economy up there. Yeah. What I, one of the thoughts that comes into my head, and I shouldn't admit, that, admit this with Anchorage, is Sarah Palin. Well, you know, uh, I'm trying to think if we have other claims to fame. Um, well, you've had some really uh, outstanding political people come out of Alaska. And I'm, I think uh, that's fair. You've had a senator. What was his name? He got in some trouble, but later they found out he wasn't sure. at fault. Uh, I forget. Anyway, I've, yeah. always, I've never been to Alaska, and uh, I've always thought it would be an interesting place to go. So anyway... Born in Alaska, what what brought you down here? What's your background? Uh, so my background is um, in business, essentially. And prior to this role, I ran an economic development fund for the city of Anchorage, where we oh. took capital and we paired it with local fund managers, paired it with private capital, and invested in local companies. With the idea being that you would invest in local companies, grow jobs, create more private industry within your community. Was that a city department or was that a separate kind of like a nonprofit organization? It was the city itself, which mm. was uh, both an advantage and disadvantage, right? The city is a $1 billion entity, yep. really. Yep. It's, a, it's a rather large entity in Anchorage. Yep. Um, but your government and you're doing private investment, and that comes with pluses and minuses. Mm -hmm. Was the uh, was Anchorage in Alaska? I've always thought of them as pretty robust in terms of their economies because they got fishing and oil. And is that true? Or not true? Do they go up and down and suffer like everybody else? Yeah, <laughs> great question. And they suffer badly. And earlier you asked what brought me down here. And, you know, for three years, I still did that job and commuted before the pandemic and would fly up every month to Anchorage to do the work. And I was online before the pandemic hit. So I was telecommuting before it was super cool. Mm. It was just a little bit cool. But Alaska has deep issues with its economy and struggling to transition out of that resource extraction role. Oil and gas has a different future in front of it. Uh, in light of climate change, in light of increased regulation, and Alaska has to find its way through that. And yeah. so it, it really struggled with boom and bust cycles, massive, huge booms that would drive the economy, and then crashes when the price of oil would drop down to 20 or less dollars a barrel. So, you know, I really left because I saw that that long-term structural issue along with kind of economic contraction, wasn't gonna change anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to be in a place that's equally beautiful and that's why I'm in Kitsap. Yeah. Uh, last question about Alaska. What's, what's the weather like living in Alaska? Um, I am told that this year a large cloud has parked itself over the Chugach Range and is remaining there and things will be between 48 and 52 degrees. The last time we had a gray cloud park over Anchorage and not move for a summer, uh, I, I I lost it and moved overseas. Yeah. So um, the, but it can normally be, what happens? The summers sixty 
It Degrees? Can, they can be beautiful. It can yeah. be really stunning. And, and I have to say, um, I love the place a lot. And it's my deepest wish that everybody who can go does go. It is the most beautiful place on earth, yeah. 100%. Uh, there are things you see in Alaska that you will never see anywhere else. So I encourage you to take the trip. Well, I've always, I'm not a cruise person, but I've always wanted to take, if I could take one cruise, I'd like to take that Alaska Inland Passage cruise to Alaska. Seems really sensible. And because you're in Bremerton, you just, you know, get yeah. on the ferry, take your suitcase and then go down to the cruise ship. You don't even have to be in a car. And does it, are you just snowed in the whole winter? This year they were, lots of years they're not. It's, yeah. it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. And, yeah. and the population, what does it stay about the same most? I de it, or does it grow? Well, it, it was growing for a long time, sort of through the early 2010s and then mid to late tens early you know before 2020 we mm -hmm. started seeing contraction just kind of on an ongoing basis but things were roaring up there for a while it's a good place to start your career i think yeah and i'm i'm you know i've followed because we live where we live i followed the salmon industry mm -hmm. and, the, and the tribal issues relative to fishing and all that kind of thing i'm assuming the same challenges, issues, opportunities go on in Alaska around the fishing industry, right? I mean, fish is a big deal up there. That's, yeah. I'm not really knowledgeable about fish other yeah. than other than I eat it and I can't catch yeah. it. <laughs> okay, well, Alaska guy. Well, that's, inter that's interesting. Do you ever go back? I go back about once a year. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't know. Um, let's talk about what you do for a regular job. Kita, which has been around, how long has Kita been here? A long time. We are celebrating our 40th anniversary wow. this year. That's amazing. Yeah. Has it always been called Kita? No, I think it's had quite a few names. Yeah. Uh, I think it was called the EDC, Kitsap EDC for a while, or EDC right. Kitsap. It had a regional title at one point, Cred C or something. It, it, it always had a few initials that have carried it over. I want to say in the mid 2000s, it was rebranded as Kitsap Economic Development Alliance, and that is stuck. Okay, what's the mission at Kita? What's it? Why? Why is it here? Yeah, our mission at Kita is to facilitate investments that promote livable, resilient communities fueled by the by the innovation and diverse people of Kitsap. So that's a lot of words, there right? But let's talk about some things that are there. Um, we have. Our diverse community. Are you, you're part government, right? I mean, you've got, got some government support. Oh, yeah, we have significant right. government support. There are other KEDAs in the state, mm -hmm. right? What, what do they call them? They're called associate development organizations. Okay, and they're part of the Department of Commerce? That's true. Yeah, so so there's, I don't know, 30 of them around the state or more than that? or 37 or so. 37? So every county has an economic development entity that's aligned with the Department of Commerce. And the Department of Commerce wants us to do things like work with new companies, help connect companies to import and export opportunities, um, conduct recruitment activity. And one of the most important things we do, or the, the most important thing, thing we do, is called business retention and expansion. Mm -hmm. So that means we are um, working with local businesses. And in our case at Kita, a lot of what we do is help them connect to government contracts. So mm. broader, especially in this community, huh? especially in this community, because we have a competitive competitive advantage in our economy, and that competitive advantage is really naval base Kitsap. Uh, we have a, a no one has the um, naval infrastructure that we do really anywhere. There are other significant naval installations. But our naval installation has, you know, the only dry dock capable of lifting an aircraft carrier on the West Coast, the largest fuel reserves of the Pentagon, um, an intellectual property shop in Keyport, uh, most of the ballistic missile fleet at Bangor. And uh, it's really remarkable how much infrastructure there is here. Well, we, this county has been a military based economy for a long time, right? I mean, I uh, don't know. I don't know what it percentage of our economy it is, but we've been a, over the years, a kind of a sl military driven, slow growth community for a long time here. It seems like at least as long as I've been here. What's the, and I know that's going to change and we'll talk about that. 
What's the difference between KEDA and the Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're allies, and you know, KEDA, you asked about our, our mission, and I gave you our literal mission statement, but our, our vision is economic vitality for all in one spectacular place. Mm -hmm. So we think about two things. We think about how different we are west of the water. We're part of Greater Seattle, but every other part of Greater Seattle is over on the I-5 corridor, right? Snohomish, King, Pierce counties. They right. just have a different everything. And then we have this remarkable natural environment that we're in. And then all means everybody from the young people going through our schools to the indigenous communities to um, people of color and, and every single person that's in Kitsap, we want to see them economically thrive mm -hmm. because that creates opportunity for everybody. So we work with businesses to help connect them to government well, contracts. Jobs. jobs. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have a job, mm -hmm. right, then life's not very good. Right. So it's opportunity to work and support your family and r hopefully rise up in your opportunity as it presents itself. You know, it's a it's about creating jobs for people. It, it's about that. And your economic life determines so much about everything else in your life. Right. Well, yeah, you got to pay the rent, buy the groceries. Determines how healthy you are. Yeah, your you health. Know, the number one driver of your life expectancy to some extent right. is where, where you are in the economy. So we want to see everybody thrive. And we work on the major issues of our economy. And we also work with local businesses to grant them opportunities to make sure that they're performing to the best of their ability. Um, you know, we work on everything from uh, what, what are the costs of housing in Kitsap and why is it so expensive and what can we do about it? Who are our top employers? Who employs the most people? Uh, to you know, what is cost of living like life like in Kitsap, and why is it changing here? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the larger things that we tackle. Um, one of the things that I think we're particularly concerned about right now is the workforce. Uh, we had a conversation earlier, and and you know, I I had lamented. We had both lamented that you couldn't find enough lifeguards in Seattle, right? Right. But you kind of can't find anybody anywhere. Port Madison Enterprises is hiring. Uh, St. Michael Medical Center is hiring. And some of our private employers are hiring. They're hiring to the tune of, we could add 15% to our payrolls, 15% more people, another one in six. But what we're struggling with is we just can't get them. And why is that? Some of it is demographic change. Uh, the retirement of the baby boomers, um, the largest generation in, in history, has led to a massive exit from our workforce. Uh, some of it has been reprioritization of people's lives after COVID. Um, there, you know, there was a big ballyhoo about Amazon requiring everybody to come back to the offices in downtown Seattle. That's really exciting. I think this week, Amazon workers are walking off the job. Right. So people are reprioritizing. Well, they're going to have a rally. They're going to have a rally. They're going to walk off they're gonna, the job. They're not, they're not going to walk off the job, but they're, <laughs> they're going right. to walk out of the office, right? right? Um, I mean, they do. A lot of people have gotten darn used to working at home. Sure. Right? And that, our former board chair who's at Microsoft says that genie's not going back in the bottle, right? That people permanently will change the way they work. And you know, I worked in an, I, I worked eight to five my whole life and I worked in an office and I loved it, right? I mean, I can't imagine not going to the office. I love being around people. I love the conversations that went on. I love the brainstorming that went on when a problem came up. I don't know how I, I don't I don't know how they do it. It's but, di uh, it's different. You know, we're we're doing one plus days in the office right now as a team, and then everybody's just responsible for hitting their numbers, hitting their milestones. You yeah. Know? It's going to be interesting to see how this all works out. But, you know, one of the parts of it, especially with young people, is this life balance work thing, right? Right. I mean, my generation and my parents' generation was 8 to 5. You went to work and you got weekends off. Not true anymore. I that's, mean, people that, want, that's where I people, started, too. And people, yeah. people want more than that, and God bless them. I think it's... Probably a good thing. They're better parents. They spend more time with their children. They're healthier because they get out and exercise during the day. There's all kinds of great things about it, finding that balance, which I always had trouble doing. You know, I'd, I'd always worked in a job I loved. I worked for the Boys and Girls Club of America for 40, 30 years. And, God, I just spent 80 hours a week 
working at it, you know, because I love doing it. So, uh, yeah, th this is an interesting thing. So let's talk back to Kita again. Uh, how do you finance it? Uh, um, I know you get some money from the state. You have a board. How does it work? Yeah, so uh, we are funded primarily through public and private investors in our organization. Uh, all the local jurisdictions are investors in Kita. So if you could think of a government, they're involved with us, whether it's the county or Paul's Bow or Bainbridge Island, Port Orchard, Bremerton. Um, we're very thankful for that, public corporations as well. But Kitsap Bank, Kitsap Credit Union, St. Michael Medical Center, Port Madison Enterprises. Uh, and, and it's more difficult over here for an organization like yours because there are fewer, we're so military based, there are fewer big companies that have the resources to do that kind of thing, right, than other, than other communities. We're growing in that respect, but sir, probably been a bigger challenge. Yes, certainly. Uh, not as big of a challenge as maybe Clallam and Jefferson no, County's no. face. Yeah, I got that. But, but yeah, we're not King, we're not Pierce, we're not Snohomish. You know, there's no um, Funko Pop or Boeing or biomedical company uh, within easy reach for us to go talk to. That's true. But it, 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 the good news is in a lot of those communities, King County, and I've worked in, I worked in Bellevue 30 years, there's a lot of competition for those dollars. There are a lot of organizations that seemingly cross over and do a, some of the same work, right? And but they're all looking for for financial support. So it makes it hard. You're it's very competitive. Sure. We're over here. We have fewer organizations. It seems we have fewer sponsor potential sponsors, but we have fewer organizations. And you guys have been here for a long time and. I know that you're very well supported in the business community and in the government community, it seems to me. Right? Yeah, we we're, can... we're very thankful. This is a great community. And you know, I think one of the things that makes Kitsap special is that uh, people are generally collaborative and work to solve problems together. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not perfectly, um, and everybody always has a different idea, but I do think people come together when they need to. And uh, that's what we've seen at Kita is that we're very well supported. So on an average day at Kita, what happens? Are you getting people calling in saying, I need some information, I'm interested in your community, that sort of thing? Is that a big part of your day? Are you going out and looking for companies that might be interested in moving to Kitsap County? What do you do during the day? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, yesterday we, we're sort of headed into our year end and checking on our numbers. So we did. What's your year end? Uh, our year end is looking at uh, sort of the metrics that we need to hit. How many times, how many mm. recruitment discussions have we initiated and and how many business retention and, and expansion interactions have we had? And really that is how much have you worked with your local companies to help them solve problems? Uh, and that's one area working with our local companies where we knock it out of the park, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, lately, um, my background is in entrepreneurial-led economic development. You know, we, we do really well working with startups and people trying to build new companies too. And we get some of those. So the companies the call you and say, I, "We got a problem, a challenge here. Can you help us? You got any ideas? That sort of thing." I wouldn't say it's cold. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we get people who come in and they say, you know, hey, I've got this business and I'm struggling to increase my opportunity. What can we do? And we can we connect them and get them ideas or put them in the right place to get help. Right. Mm -hmm. That's part of what we do. But, you know, for example, if we're thinking about one of our major uh, employers, St. Michael Medical Center, and that we've built this new amazing half billion dollar facility and we suddenly have this facility that's at scale, but we have a growing community and we need to scale up the workforce. That's a problem that takes uh, more time and more discussion. It takes the work of great partners like Olympic College, yeah. uh, trying to work to put together an allied health center in Paul's Bow. Um, it takes us looking at different ways to get people into the workforce. It takes the Olympic Workforce Development Council. So when you start to tackle those kinds of big problems, it's a much more, um, what's the word, team-based approach, collaborative mm -hmm. approach to solving a challenge. Do you get a chance to work on some pretty major ideas once in a while? 
where you put the gut like the like you said, we've got a nursing problem, right? So you got Olympic College that probably their nursing class fills up tomorrow. And so how do they expand that? All that kind of stuff. So you put put that kind of a package together and be able to work on it with all those various entities? Yeah. We work on we we spend time working on very big problems as yeah. well as helping local companies. Yeah. And uh you know, when we looked at these two major issues, workforce and housing, and, and we, so we, we've come up with our organization's five-year plan, right? And we're like, well, what do we do? Where do we add capacity? If we're going to create a more of an impact at Kita, are we going to try to work on the housing situation? Or are we going to try to work on the workforce situation? Mm -hmm. And when we looked at housing, we thought, well, we just don't have the levers and we can't move things as easily as organizations like the Kitsap Builders Association or the County Association of Realtors or folks like that. And there's and, and to also Kitsap Community Resources is doing great work there. Okay, so what about workforce? And originally I hadn't thought we were going to dive into the world of workforce, but we had conversations in January with every major employer and they all said, we're really struggling to find people to work. It's a major issue. We can't you know, you're losing economic opportunity when you're not fully staffed. You're literally leaving business on the table, right? right. Those revenues. Is the shipyard included in that? Yes, it is. And, you know, one of the things that we do, for example, is work with Olympic College um, to have them ready to go through the procurement process for the apprenticeship program. So, yeah. for, for example, Which they're is a, a great program. The apprentice award winning program, program yeah. we're told. One of the best in the country. Yeah. 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 So, training, expanding Olympic College. Uh, I saw somewhere the other day that Olympic College, uh, community colleges around the country now are starting to grow because of having these, spe you know, welding is a big class in some of these community colleges now. So, these, these skills that are needed out in the workforce where you don't have to go get a BA degree, right? You just go get your degree in welding or whatever it is. I think, you know, that kind of thing is so important right now, right? 100%. And, you know, Olympic is doing things to increase access to the trades. They're, they're, and, and I look at us, Kitsap's borders don't always stop between Port Orchard and Gig Harbor and Highway 3, right? So right. Olympic College is building out a trade center, I think, in Shelton right, in Mason County. Mm -hmm. And we're excited about that because yeah. we pull from those people to work in our community. Joe, we're going to do three shows because they just gave me a notice we only got a couple of minutes. What have I not asked you about Kita you'd like to share? Uh, I think one thing that's important to say is that we look as economic development as service to this entire community and helping people grow their economic opportunity. And that's really what we're here to do. So if we can be helpful to anyone in any way, you know, yesterday we had a conversation with somebody who's putting together a nonprofit um, to help workers who have suffered adverse childhood experiences get into the workforce. And um, th by the way, it's Crystal Thomas at Express Pros in Bremerton. And she's like, you know, I, this is going to be a 400-hour internship, and I need ways to bring it forward. And that was one of the things we were talking about yesterday. So we are here and excited, whether it's about building an apartment in Bremerton or working on your nonprofit or your next business idea. We're here to help. Well, you're well thought of in the community. You've got a big board, a, a, very, a board of very well-known, prominent business people in the community and government people, too. So the, that speaks well of the organization. Um, you're a leader, and this program's about leadership. How would you do, uh, how uh, how would you describe your leadership style? Boy, I, th I, I that is a that is always a difficult question. Um, I'm I try to be hands on and not overbearing. <laughs> you'll hands have to, on and not overbearing. You'll, ha you'll have to ask the team about that. So I, I'm present. I'm engaged. I know what's going on. But in the end, if it's somebody's job to report our numbers to commerce or to put together a press release, they have the pure freedom to do that and however they want to do that. If they run it by me, they'll get my feedback, but they don't always have to run it by me. So hands on with people to do the freedoms that they need to do. 
Yeah, I think leaders create change. And in order to do that, to what you just said, you have to have good people around you. 100%. You know? And uh, I was always, in the jobs I've always had, I was thought of myself as the leader of change. But, you know, and sometimes somebody that works for you has to tell you, that's probably not a good idea, <laughs> boss. Uh, or that's a great idea, and here's what it's going to take us to carry it out, right? But, uh, yeah, I just think today, I, th I think in today's world we have a leadership problem. In, in, in our ferry system's a mess, right? You know, we just... We have a leadership challenge in in our community and in most communities today. And um, I worry about that, not every night, but some nights I worry about it. Um, Joe, I've really enjoyed our conversation. It went way too fast. I've got a million things here I didn't ask you, so we'll do this again sometime. But I thank you for your good work, and I'm glad you're down here from Alaska helping the Kitsap County and everybody that lives here. So, Sounds fun. Yeah, thank you. Enjoyed it very much. So uh, that was my conversation with Keita, Joe, who is the executive director, and I look forward to an another conversation with another community leader. See you next time.